those jumpy, jumpy puppies, right? Jump, 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 jump. I totally know what you're dealing with. And I know some of you might be watching this and you have older dogs too. I'm really going to gear this more towards um, puppies right now. But even, you know, older dogs can, can learn from these techniques too. So first of all, one of the biggest things that we need to learn with dog training is to listen to what your puppy is communicating. So dog training is not about control. I'm going to repeat that again. Dog training is not about control. It's not about making our puppy to comply to our wishes and then totally disacknowledging what their needs and wants are. Um, when you're doing that, you are squashing all of their wants and needs and then their emotions are getting all bottled up and you create all sorts of behavioral problems that way. So what you want to do is yes, have a goal. Yes, I want my puppy to jump, jump less. And at the same time, be listening to what your puppy is communicating to you as well. So when they're jumping, they're wanting to say hi. How many of you guys know that? Because I know some people, they'll come up with me, come to, come up to me and not really be sure on why their dog is jumping or puppy is jumping. And, and they think that they're actually doing it to annoy you. Um, I want you to understand that when two puppies or dogs play together, they are jumping on each other. That is how they greet each other. That is how they say hi. So think of it as a compliment. It's actually a compliment when your puppy is jumping on you. They're saying, I love you and I want to interact with you. So get rid of any negative stories you have about it. Throw it in the trash. And then bring in the fact that they love you. Isn't that nice? Oh, that feels so good that they love you. So then what do you do about it? Well, um, first of all, turning your back is a great idea. Turning your back and then um, when we're just dealing with the concrete behavior and then being a tree. So you're literally standing up and turning your back like this towards your dog. So your dog's back here. You're turning, you're turning your back and you're a tree. You're still, you're not giving eye contact. You're not looking at your dog, okay? And you're waiting. And you might wait a while, or you might just wait a few seconds. What are you waiting for? You're waiting for good behavior. What can that good behavior be? Generally, I like to reward a sit because the puppy is less likely to jump from a sit. So I'd click and treat the sit. Now, your puppy may down and sit. Then click and treat a down. Or your puppy may just not sit and is in four on the floor on a stand. Go ahead and reward the stand then. That's cool. And then eventually you could progress to the sit if you want. Now, again, that's um, really just focusing on the behavior, right? So the need is for attention. So a lot of times. So then you want to make sure that you're rewarding the good behavior. I, can, I can't tell you how many times I've heard people go, I've turned my back and my puppy still is jumping on me. Okay, um, think of it like this. Um, my child is yelling and I turn my back and I ignore them every time they're yelling. Okay, now my child is yelling more and louder because I'm not ever giving them attention when they need it the most, right? So you want to make sure that when there's that sit that you're giving that attention, you're nurturing that relationship. So a click and treat is great. Throwing the ball, playing fetch. Um, well, I, that's the same thing, right? I meant take out the tug toy, pet your puppy. If you're petting slow and relaxed, petting is best. If the petting is increasing the jumping, then take out the petting. Eye contact, praise, all of those ways are giving your pup attention. You gotta get the attention part in there. That is so, so, so important. It is the underlying need, it is the whole reason why they're jumping. They are requesting that. We need to offer it. Um, so, for example, if my child is yelling and I just ignore them, I'm not dealing with the underlying need that they need support. So I may say yelling is okay, but hitting isn't, right? I'm not going to um, reinforce hitting me, right? But I am going to acknowledge the need that you need some support and I'm gonna help you through that um, with those, you know, with emotional awareness. So then the other thing that you wanna think about too is how much exercise is your puppy getting, right? So 
are they getting enough exercise? So a lot of, I get, I'm getting a lot of older people that are getting these puppies and they're like, ah! Okay guys, if you're older, that's okay, don't fret. But you do need to realize that even though you're older, your puppy still needs exercise. So you could hire someone to walk your dog, you could take your dog to um, doggy daycare. Um, check out Ultima in Burton. I haven't checked it out, but that place looks wonderful. That could be a great place. Um, they have a whole outdoor playground for dogs to, to, to run. Now, you know, you do want to make sure your puppy is fully vaccinated before you take them in those places. And I would recommend they're at least six months, but it's a place you can kind of think of in the future. In the meantime, enrichment toys are great. Um, so you can give your dogs Kong wobblers, buster cubes, bully sticks, play a go find it game. Um, spread the kibble all over the floor and have them go find it. Take a muffin tin, put all kinds of treats and kibble in the muffin tin, put tennis balls on top of there, an enrichment activity. Um, do something where you're giving them other things to chew on or lick on. They make lick toys where you could put peanut butter on them. Kongs are great. You can stuff them with mashed sweet potatoes, mashed bananas mixed with your kibble peanut butter, freezing them will give your puppy even more to do. Enrichment, enrichment, enrichment. Don't do the same thing every day. Give multiple type of enrichments throughout the day. Um, and then playing, doing a lot of, a lot, a lot of playing. When they jump on you, turn your back, throw the ball again when they're sitting, four on the ground or downing. Same thing with tug. Get that energy out. Take them on short walks. Walk them down the headwaters trail wherever you're located. Get them out. Do not keep your puppy at home because they are not vaccinated. I repeat again, do not keep your puppy at home because they're not vaccinated. Just be aware of where you take them. They need to go out, they need socialization, and they need exercise. You don't want to take them into the largest dog traffic area ever where you're running into all these vaccinated dogs. But walking on the Headwaters Trail to parks, etc., completely fine. You see fecal matter? Avoid it. Take them in the tractor supply store. Take them to Home Depot. Um, take them into PetSmart, Petco. PetSmart, Petco have higher dog traffic. Pick them up if you wanna um, avoid that, if you're really worried about that disease. But to be honest, you know, science has actually proven that your puppy is more likely to have socialization problems if you don't take them out than get a disease. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about the PetSmart if it was my puppy. Um, or the pet stores, but the dog parks, you know, off leash dog parts, I would avoid like the plague until all the vaccinations were done and my puppy is six months of age. I hope that's helpful for you. And if you got a puppy and you want to jive and jive and jive and get some help, create that well behaved dog. I am doing a live online puppy Zoom group kindergarten class or course. Um, it's a six week course. It starts next Saturday on the 13th from 1130 to 1230. We're gonna cover a different topic every week. We're gonna be on Zoom live with you. You line up your cameras, it's interactive. I'm gonna see your pups. We're gonna actively train your pups together. One of the kind, you're probably not gonna find that anywhere. Super fun, don't have to leave your home. You get into a place where your puppy's not distracted. We can cover so much material because you know, we're not dealing with all the puppies wanting to interact with each other and da 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 all that chaos. We can get all of these topics covered. The whole entire course is only $100. Probably not going to offer it this, at this price again. So pop on there, get on there, get registered. If you want to pay less than that, you can pay $25 per class. Links below if you are interested. Love to see you there. Got more questions about it? Let me know. Have questions about jumping or any puppy problems? Comment below. Let me know. I want to interact with you. And have a great day. Bye, guys.